on the last podcast, we were talking about uh, ice fishing in that ice scraper or scooper. I call it a scraper on that one, too. Yep. By the way. For the human-sized litter box. Yeah. Correct. No, it worked great. It, it was everything yeah. I wanted in a scooper. One scoop. And what was funny is the ice was melting while we were out there, so there was a lot of slush. Mm-hmm. So we were kind of shoveling slush out of the shanty, and it was the perfect, the That's perfect awesome. thing. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, Did you get made fun of? No. Yeah, I feel like something Scott would bring up. I yeah, had, I, yeah. had, I had Jeffrey use it. I just didn't. <laughs> nice. yeah. Yeah. He's, he's the te- lab rat. Yep. Well, look at him. Yeah. You know. Um. But uh, no, we went out. Uh, we went out on Saturday, and it was cold. It was like negative eight out, and uh, not negative eight. It was <laughs> eight. Like, uh, it was eight out. The wind chill was negative eight because it was windy. And well, in that night, it had gotten. It got down to negative. Very cold. Negative two regular temp, and then it was like negative twenty wind chill. When we went out, it was. Eight degrees, negative eight wind chill. And uh, we tested the first area first, and the ice wasn't safe. It was only like, it was three, three and a half, which if it was just me and Scott, probably would have done it. But having the girls out there and stuff, it's you just can't yeah. do it. You know, it's too many variables. And they're going to want the heater. And it's like, how do you tell them they're safe, but they can't turn the heater on because then they won't be? Yeah, yeah. So we went around to the other side, that which had frozen sooner, and it was almost six inches. So we were able to put up the shanty. Um, brand new lake, never fished it before, bounced around a little bit, ended up finding crappie. The first day we brought home 32 fish, crappie and bluegill, and we had That's 15 cool. bass go off on tip-ups. I mean, it was a, it was incredible day. Um, how long did it take you to clean your portion of fish? I cleaned all of them. Well, I know, but how long did it take, do you think? Hour. That's, oh, not, bad. that's not bad. I thought. No, I was longer. moving maybe an hour and 20 once you, um, Abigail was running the vacuum sealer and stuff, so nice. I was I was filleting and skinning, and then hand them off to her. She'd rinse them off, check them for bones, pat them dry, and then throw them in the LEM vacuum sealer. I remember as a kid we kept some we kept some bluegill and we used the spoon method where you descale them. Guy and I, What's my that? dad used to, that's a filth. I, I hated it. You have every reason to hate it. Where you're like scraping? Yeah, you, you use a spoon to scrape you against go ag- the scales. You go against the scales. I used a knife. My mm-hmm. dad taught me with a knife. And basically, you start at just behind the gill and you go to the tail, mm-hmm. running the knife. The knife is like completely like this. Yep. And you're going like that and it scrapes the scales off. Right. But you never get them all in one swipe. You got to do a bunch of swipes. You, you can miss some and then he's going to yell at you. And then what you do is you cut down just behind the head. Yep. And then out the belt, like you go almost all the way through the fish, turn the knife and go out to the pooper. Yep. And then you reach in and just dig out the guts. Okay. And then it's done. You leave the back tail on because oh. when you cook them, if you fry them, the back tail bec- becomes like a potato chip basically. Yum. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's pretty, yeah, we fry them that way. It is. What's n- the point of the scales? To Take get it, off. you don't want to eat them because you leave the skin on because then you can fry them better. Oh, okay. so there's like a benefit, but it's such a pain. The other problem I've it, seen someone use like a cheese grater before, and like yeah, there's some, there's stuff that like way. that. There's things that you can buy to put it like a tumbler thing, like a dryer looking deal mm-hmm. that'll pull them off. You can do all that, sure. I think they make a glove now that you can like do it with your hand. Yeah, but the scales go everywhere because it's like yep. it's, it's like puzzle r- pieces. It's almost as if you're rubber banding each one of them, you know. Yep. Um, and you would scale them. The other thing is too is the bones stay in then. So you're not losing any meat because when they when you fry them and cook them, there's like a way to do it where you start at like the belly and you kind of open them up like this and all the ribs stay up and then you can pull all the bones out in one swing Okay. from the spine. If you weren't going to waste – I mean if you were in a survival situation, that's what you do because you wouldn't want to waste anything. But it's just uh, – that's how my dad used to make me do it. We'd come home from fishing and we'd have a basket of fish – I mean, we went a lot, too. I mean, we went every – I'd say we went twice a month in the summer months, so we probably went seven, eight times a year together. All bluegill perch stuff? Mm-hmm. Bluegill perch, rock bass, you know, that's what we kept. Uh, crappie now and then, but we went to the same lake every time because we could rent a little uh, rowboat, mm-hmm. and he had a, a motor from the 50s. It's a three-and-a-half <laughs> horse. He made it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a three-and-a-half <laughs> horse. I think he won it or something, or his dad won it. And then he got it, something like that. But it was from the 50s, maybe 60s. And uh, we put that on the back of the rowboat and be able to tool all around. And we did really well. Like, it kind of set a new standard for me for fishing. Uh, when I was really little, this is a kind of an offshoot of the story, but when I was really little, I, like, there was a phase where I wasn't that interested in fishing and hunting. 
But I had a dream the one night about fishing. And I remember waking up and coming downstairs and be like, Dad, 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 I want to go fishing. He's like, okay, good. And I was probably eight or nine. I was like, I want to I want to go. I want to go. And then from that point on, we were always going, whether it was ice fishing, whether it was, uh, uh, you know, going on those Sunday Sunday mornings and stuff. And uh, that it was so cool. We'd be the first ones out there. And we'd go to the same spot the first time every time. And, like, always, like, the first cast, you'd get it. And I still remember – he caught uh, two big events happen. I remember he got this giant bass on Worm and Bobber. And I remember looking over the boat and the water was so clear. The fish was probably 12 foot down, but it was so clear that I could see it. And I remember seeing him with the hook in his mouth and my dad holding the rod like this, fighting him. And I remember seeing the fish have it in his mouth and go, like, fighting it. And being like, oh, my gosh, this is happening. That's like, I remember cool. being super stoked. I can I can picture it, like, I, if I got yeah. sh- sent back there. And then another time, I remember he had a um, worm and bobber in it. But what he'd do is he'd take, he'd buy minnows sometimes, put them on a hook with a huge bobber because there was pike in this lake, and he just cast it out there once in a while. So he cast it out this one time, and as soon as it hit the water, something slammed the bobber. My dad reels it all the way into the boat, nets the fish, and brings them in, and then he lets go of the bobber. <laughs> it was a pike. He thought it was a bird hitting the water. Oh, okay. So he, okay. my dad caught him on the bobber, not a hook at all. Fought him all the way into the boat. That's the, crazy. The fish is fighting. And he's like, I'm not letting go of this thing. Mm-hmm. This is my bird. <laughs> he got stuck in his mouth. Yeah, he's been there before. You know, he, 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 had, he, had been, <laughs> That's funny. he went through something where he fought, a, he fought a bird before, and this is what it looked like. Huh. But, yeah, that was those were, those were pretty cool stories. But we'd come home on the ride home, and I remember I'd be so tired because we'd leave by, like, 545 in the morning to be the first people there Jeez. as soon as the bait shop opened. And um, – be like falling asleep and you get home and you'd be like, all right, you scale them, I'll clean them. And then I remember like, <laughs> he'd be like, you didn't even do the side on this fish. Like I would just, I was yeah, like, yeah, like, I'm done with this. I was like a kid and I just wanted it to be over with. And I was like, you'll clean them up. <laughs> but uh, then I was like, I made a pitch on one day. I go, I think we should switch jobs. He goes, no. Because <laughs> yeah, like, no, the gutting would I, be no big deal. Yeah. That takes two seconds. Yeah, but that's like a dad thing. You yeah. know, they're well, like, you no, gotta, no. You got to do your time. No, I don't want you to have to do with the guts and stuff. I got that. Yeah, no, the, <laughs> knife, the, knife, the knife's sharp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, scaling's rough. That's funny.